Hello, this is Berhain Selassie again, the Orthodox Catholic, and today's video will be again about Bishop Barron's uh, attempt at trying to defend reasonable hope. This is his most recent try. We're on his website. He he publishes a lengthy article, or sorry, his team publishes a lengthy article, because I don't know if it's himself, but I suspect it might be. Um, so, for context, Bishop Barron disabled his video comments section on his YouTube as to whether or not hell could be empty, as a theory, as a reasonable hope. Um, so, let's go over to his webpage where he answers a bunch of hypothetical Q&As, to be fair, some of them are things that people legitimately get wrong, they're just straw men, arguments they make against the bishop. Uh, so anyway, he goes, uh, talk, he's going to mention, of course, Hanser von Balthasar, favorite liberal theologian, but people pretend he's orthodox. Um, here's the video, quick questions, okay, he addresses all these questions at length, except for the Fatima one, I'll deal with it here. My, I love it when the people bring up Fatima, uh, because uh, Bishop Barron initially in his YouTube sections uh, was trying to imply, well, Catholics don't have to believe in Fatima, which is true, we don't have to believe in this any private revelation, however, the problem is, it's the same problem that uh, the Pharisees had when confronting Jesus. Uh, Jesus didn't want to answer the question directly, so he said, I'll only answer the question if you'd first tell me, who does John the Baptist derive his authority for baptism from? Is it from God, or is it from men? And the Pharisees do, if they answered it's from men, um, everybody's going to turn against them, because the common people believed that John the Baptist was sent by God, uh, yet the Pharisees did not. So this is the same hole that Bishop Barron was stuck in as the Pharisees. Everybody believes Fatima. Uh, so he had his chain whistle a different tune and said, oh no, these are just to warnings of torments of hell, not a window into an unavoidable future. We know this because Fatima, uh, the same parents, has the Fatima prayer, forgive us our sins, save all souls from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. So from this they try to springboard and say, this is talking about the whole of universalism, however, it's just talking about people that you have to pray for who are presently alive, that their your desire is them to go to heaven and that their sins be forgiven because uh, that's what you're supposed to desire. However, this doesn't mean you're supposed to hope that every man who has ever existed goes to heaven because it would be contrary to the plain reading of scripture. Uh, furthermore, he's trying to inter interpret this in the light of the previous uh, statement, sorry, the previous statement in light of lead all souls to heaven, uh, rather than the other way around, we could say lead all souls to heaven, but that doesn't mean we believe everybody's going to heaven because of the because of the vision in which people saw the torments of hell. And where do you, I don't know where he gets it, it was simply a warning. Um, but anyway, let's go on into the rest of his section. What are Bishop Barron's views on hell and salvation? Bishop Barron, Bishop Barron agrees with Hebrews, Hebrews 9.27, about appointed once for judgment. Okay, that's fine. He also affirms the Catechism's teaching, those who die in uh, mortal sin go straight away to hell. Okay, that's dogmatic teaching, but it also, as you note, also mentions original sin. Finally, he believes in accordance with the Magisterium, that we are saved by faith, through working through love. Okay, that's fine. As to whether or not a soul dies in a state of unrepentant mortal sin, or to say another way, who is in hell, or how many souls have been condemned, here's what Bishop Barron has said, and they have another article on that. Uh, Catholic doct doctrine is that hell exists, but yet the church has never claimed to know if any human being is actually in hell. Is there anyone in this, in this state of being? We don't know for sure. We are in fact permitted to hope and pray that all people will finally surrender to the alluring beauty of God's grace. Where does he get this? Where does he get this idea that we're permitted to hope and pray that all will finally surrender? Um, I'm pretty sure it's his own conjecture because it goes against uh, the fact that the Council of Trent and Vatican II and Lumen Gentium uh, 48 say that people will go to hell at Judgment Day. But uh, I'll go into that later. Does Bishop Barron deny that hell exists? Well, to be fair, he doesn't deny it exists. He just says maybe 
it will be empty of human beings, which in effect is the same result as saying hell might not exist. But uh, to be fair, he doesn't believe hell doesn't exist. He just says that maybe it'll just be completely vacant. Um, he says, Hell or Gehenna are special metaphors for the lonely and sad condition of having definitively refused the offer of divine life. Uh, this is a very strange statement. He should clarify. He shouldn't say that uh, Hell is a spatial metaphor because uh, Hell is a physical place that people, like, at, after the resurrection, we, we return to our physical bodies. And then if we go to heaven, we go to heaven in physical form. And if we go to hell, we go to hell in physical form with our bodies. So it's going to be a physical place with physical torments. So to say it's a spatial metaphor, it's, I don't know, it almost implies the denial of the resurrection. But I'll give Bishop the Baron the benefit of the doubt. He just used words poorly. Uh, human nature, human free will necessitates that existence of hell in so much as any person, when a human being may freely choose and definitively reject and irre irre irrevocably reject God. Is Baron a universalist? Okay, to be fair, he's not a universalist. But maybe he is. <laughs> because maybe it's because it's after all reasonable to hope that hell's empty. Uh, universalism is a claim of certainty to have definitive knowledge that all people are going to be saved, but Bishop Barron doesn't claim this. He doesn't claim to know that all people will be saved, nor does he even claim to think or expect that all will be saved. Instead, he says uh, he merely prays and hopes that all will be saved. It's critical and makes distinction between knowing, expecting, thinking, hoping. Uh, otherwise, much confusion will arise. But you might wonder, isn't hoping that all will be saved? Basically, universalism isn't at least practically universal, and the answer is no, because the diff because our important distinctions between the universalist position and dare we hope view, and anyone trying to collapse the, these views into a single, easily dismissible position is guilty of slip sloppy analysis, whether intentionally or out of ignorance, the distinction, the distinctions matter and must be recognized. <laughs> so, yeah, so it is true, he doesn't claim that everybody is, as a matter of fact, going to heaven, he just says maybe they are it's possible that's according to him uh however <laughs> this goes back to another point that he has to clarify throughout the article what does he mean by reasonable does he use the word reasonable in a reasonable manner or is he using it in an unreasonable manner because he admits maybe there's not even maybe it's a far-fetched idea and maybe that everybody will actually be saved maybe we he's, then he says we can't necessarily expect it we can't think it um but he's he's trying to argue regardless that it's somehow it's reasonable even though it might be very hard as one of the last questions in this uh article is about uh is hitler is there a saint hitler <laughs> because uh, according to bishop Barron's view uh it's reasonable to think uh there's a saint hitler um, so does Bishop Barron think hell is empty, or that all people will be saved? No, again, Bishop Barron's position is only one of hope, not thought, certainty, expectation, or probability. Again, probability. When you say it's reasonable, people think that's like saying it's probable, prob probable, because I mean that's kind of how the word reasonable sounds. <clears throat> sort of like when you say uh, beyond reasonable doubt. But uh, here he makes it sound reasonable. It could be one percent, but even then, one over one trillionth of a percent is still heresy uh, when it comes to this matter because it goes against the magisterium of the church. Bishop Barron goes on and said, while hoping and praying for hell to be empty of men, he does not know whether hell is empty. Think hell is empty? We don't expect hell to be empty. Bishop Barron simply agrees with Benedict XVI's position. And then he puts a link here to a uh, Catholic uh, news agency. It says, uh, according, um, you know, this is his own words on Pope Benedict, it says, uh, It seems to me that Benedict's position affirming the reality of hell, but seriously questioning whether the vast majority of hu human beings ends up there, is most tenable and actually the most evangelically promising. Now, the problem is Pope Benedict doesn't actually even give credence to his position. Rather, he admits that at least some people are going to hell, whereas Bishop Barron seems to suggest maybe everybody does. But Pope Benedict doesn't go to that extent. In fact, if you read God, God Ishnai, um, which was 
written by Cardinal Ratzinger before he became Pope Benedict XVI, he actually um, plainly stated in God, God is Nigh about on the Eucharist and put the word pro multis being used in a liturgy as opposed to uh, pro omni, uh, that is for all. Uh, Pope Benedict said that, uh, let me see if I got it here. Yeah, you can find it in one of my other articles. Uh, but, let me see if I can have it here. Uh, God is nigh. Got. Okay, here it is. Uh, Pope Benedict says, uh, this is why God's all-embracing desire to save all people does not involve the actual salvation of all men. He allows us the power to refuse. Uh, and this was his uh, statement as of at least 2003. Uh, you could check it out here. There's a link to the Google book. So, why doesn't Bishop Barron actually address what uh, Cardinal Ratzinger's actual views were instead of just <laughs> posting a statement saying this? He simply agrees with Pope Benedict XVI. No, he doesn't. Pope Benedict XVI never implied that maybe everybody's going to heaven. Bishop Barron did. Uh, so, it's kind of dishonest for him to even make this assertion. And then, uh, I love it when he... he People in Hanser von Balthasar's camp always love to point out uh, John Paul II uh, and his statement. It says, uh, this is Bishop Barron again. He also agrees with Pope, ben Pope John Paul II, who in 1999, uh, statement in Love's Obertore Romano, uh, said, Eternal damnation remains a real possibility, but we are not granted without special divine revelation the knowledge of whether or which human beings are effectively involved in it. So, uh, to give Bishop Barron credit, because very often people in this camp omit this next part, the note that says the note note the inclusion of the word weather which affirms which confirms John Paul II considered the possibility that hell might be empty when the statement was included in Acta Apostolica Sedis the word weather was removed by the editors and its original inclusion affirms uh, but its original inf inclusion affirms John Paul II held this outcome to be a real possibility so at least he mentions this they saying just just ignore that the official records were purged this and I I kept track of this over 10 years ago and uh, immediately after it was said most of the translations except for I think Italian and English uh, removed the word on the Vatican website but uh, the official Vatican documents did uh, just completely purge the word weather uh, uh, I think the word was C but uh, I have another article on this also uh, but why doesn't <laughs> this is another dishonesty sort of uh, by those in the camp of uh, reasonable hope. Uh, Bishop Barron's team is making a very convenient omission here by when referring to John Paul II because they quote, which actually is a papal audience that was corrected, perhaps by the Pope himself, but doesn't actually state what John Paul II's attitude or opinion in his encyclical was in regards to reasonable hope. Uh, so if we look in his encyclical, Crossing the Threshold of Hope, uh, we read, he explicitly calls out Hanser von Balthasar, Origen, and another guy, an Eastern Orthodox fellow, Sergei Bulgakov, by name. So this is uh, John Paul II, Crossing the Threshold of Hope, Chapter 28. Uh, does eternal life exist? Written around 1994. The problem of hell has always disturbed great thinkers in the church, beginning with Origen and continuing at our time with Sergei Bulgakov and Hanser von Balthasar. So notice Hanser von Balthasar and Origen, another name uh, Bishop Barron likes to quote from in this article, the article I'm going through. Uh, no, so notice these two individuals are named because they're both proponents of maybe hell's empty, or at least ultimately will be empty. Uh, John Paul continues, In point of fact, the ancient councils rejected the theory of final apocastasis, according to which the world would be regenerated after destruction, every creature would be saved, the theory that indirectly abolished hell. Notice it says indirectly abolished hell. Hmm, sounds like, although, to be fair, it's not uh, the heresy of final apocastasis. 
but uh, indirectly abolishing hell is essentially the position that maybe hell is empty. It reaches the same conclusion that hell is abolished. It's just saying, well, maybe it will be abolished. Somehow, putting the word maybe there uh, makes everything reasonable. Again, reasonable according to Bishop Barron's definition, which is very ambiguous and can't be nailed down. But anyway, John Paul II continues, But the problem remains, can God, who has loved man so much, permit the man who rejects him to be condemned to eternal torment? And yet the words of Christ are unequivocal. In Matthew's Gospel, he directly he speaks clearly of those who will go to punishment, eternal punishment, I should say. And then he cites uh, Matthew 25, verse 46. Who will these be? The church has never made any pronouncement in this regard. So, this is funny because uh, Bishop Barron is saying, Oh no, the church has never stated anybody's going to hell, just, or who will be in there. But we're allowed to think maybe everybody goes to heaven. It's funny because right here, John Paul II is saying, Yes, there will be people in hell, we just don't know which, who specifically. <laughs> so this directly contradicts the claim of Bishop Barron's team that, uh, oh no, we're, we're, this is within the church teaching. We're, this is reasonable. This is, we're permitted to believe that maybe everybody goes to heaven. Which, nope, nope. John Paul II right here says it's unequivocal. And he cites, again, Matthew 25, which is conveniently what is cited in the Catechism and in Lumen Gentium 48 at the Second Vatican Council, which states that uh, if you read, uh, for instance, uh, Lumen Gentium 49, uh, the notes that I link to in another article on this matter um, states that... <coughs> Uh, the, the use of the grammatical future indicates that uh, the church teaching is that hell actually does exist. It's not just a hypothetical. Um, as I know it here, and it's actually, I got this from James T. O'Connor. And uh, if you follow one of my other links, and including this one right here, uh, I have a link to the actual Apostolica Senaldia Sacrosanti Concilii Ocumenic. Ocumenici, Vatican, Vatican II, yada yada yada. Uh, that says uh, essentially one father wanted his sentence to be introduced, from which it would be clear that there are uh, damned de facto, lest damnation remain a mere hypothesis, to which uh, this request was rejected. And it says uh, the proposal does not square with this context. In number 48, referring to Lumen Gentium, there are cited the words of the Gospel in which the Lord himself speaks about the damned in a form which is grammatically future. So that pretty much clears everything up. It's saying that the Second Vatican Council Fathers understood uh, Lumen Gentium 48 to be teaching that uh, hell is a matter of fact, it's not just a hypothesis, which would mean, in turn, uh, we are not permitted to believe or to hope or to expect or to have any form of reasonable hope that all men be saved, because it plainly would contradict the statements of the Vatican Council, as well as the Council of Trent, as I show in another article. But uh, <laughs> let's continue on. There's a whole lot more of dishonesty going on uh, by Bishop Barron's team in trying to defend this position. Uh, and I actually uh, reference some of this in uh, one of my articles. Uh, like when I referenced uh, uh, the Council of Trent here, I, I bring to him the Council of Trent's Korean justification when, in which it says, uh, though he died for all, yet do not all receive the benefit of his death, but only those to whom the merit of his passion is communicated. The bishop says, this is conditional language. Like, and then I ask him, what language, what part of this is conditional? There's no if there. There's none of that. Uh, it's just simply that Bishop Barron wants to try to redefine, change the words, meanings, put, hyp put hypothetical language where there is none in order to make his theology fit. And this is what uh, is necessary for those in the camp of Bishop Barron and Hanser von Balthasar especially have to do. They have to redefine terms, they have to add words where they're not. And this is also a lot like what uh, Protestants do when they try to add sola fide. <laughs> they see the word justified by faith, but they see faith alone. Uh, and they do this with some other words too. But anyway, I'll continue on this article in a bit. Thank you.